Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about a script that I had mentioned previously that has a lot of great uses. It just isn't a great fit for our game. We're going to talk about the spawn on map script that Mapbox provides for us. And to talk about this script, I went ahead and created a brand new scene in our Drenches of War project called Mapbox Demonstration. And I'm going to be using this to show off a couple of different features that Mapbox has that we don't necessarily want to put into our project just because it would be easier to not disrupt that scene. So what is this script I'm talking about? If we go to the Mapbox documentation to a different type of map than the one that we're using right now, we can see the uses of this script and get a little more detail on it. So here at mapbox.com slash unity dash SDK slash overview slash zoomable map, or you can just go to mapbox.com, go to the documentation, go to unity, and go to the zoomable map. If we scroll down just a little bit, it talks about placing custom markers. And this is the typical use case for this script, but its functionality can be used for so much more than that. Here at the very beginning, they've got a bunch of scary script, but this is just a look at the inside. If we scroll down just a little farther, we've got a great example of using the spawn on map script and a description of the variables that we're going to be looking at. And as you can see, we've got four of them. There's the map, which is the map that we're attaching this to. In our case, it would be the abstract map or the map root. Going back to Unity, it's just this map root inside of the map holder. The location strings, which are a list of locations in this format of latitude, comma, space, longitude. So just a Latin long string. And that's where these markers are going to spawn. Spawn scale. And that's the scale of the spawned mar markers in the world. And it applies as a uniform scale in every direction. And then the custom prefab that you'll be using as the marker. Now, one use case of this script as written would be, say in Pocket Droids Go, we wanted a point of interest to award users with items or have a special droid that spawns at that location. Well, we could use this for that exact purpose. One way we could use this for Drenches of War is rather than creating some kind of marker or arbitrary location indicator, we could put our tank factory inside of a prefab and then just provide that here. So just to take a look, let's go do that. Head back to Unity. And I'm going to go ahead and close up all of these just to save us a little bit of room. And inside of the game objects, I'm going to right click, create a folder, and I'm going to name this Tank Factory Prefab. Just like that. And then up here in the hierarchy, we're just going to say Create Empty Game Object. And we're going to name this Tank factory obj so tank factory obj then we'll go to our scripts and we're going to grab this tank factory and we'll just drag it onto this object cool so we've got a spawn rate we've got our radius height spawn object let's grab a tank and drag that in so now it should be spawning tanks right perfect Let's grab this tank factory obj and drop it into the tank factory prefab folder. And now we've got our prefab. So let's delete that. And then we'll go to the map root. Inside the map root, scroll down to the bottom to add component. And we're going to look for a script called spawn on map. Right there scroll down and we're going to drag this map root that we've got in as the map object and then in our location strings we're going to go ahead and make this a size one and we're going to grab 
from the very top here, the current latitude and longitude string. So I'm going to copy, head down here, and inside of element 0, I'm going to paste that. And then I'm going to grab this tank factory obj and drag it into the marker prefab. Now, just so we kind of know what to expect, if we go back over to our tank factory obj, then we can see, OK, we've got our spawn rate of one second, a spawn radius of 0.6, and a spawn height of 10. Let's drop this down to a 0.1 so it's a pretty tight circle and we can clearly see all the tanks. But just to make things a little easier on ourselves, let's set the spawn height to 1. And yeah, we'll leave the spawn rate at 1. And maybe we'll actually bump this up to a 3 just to get a little bit of variety. Now that those settings are updated, let's press play and see what's going on. OK, awesome. So our tanks are spawning. Our tank factory obj has been created. And we can clearly see, first off, they're getting stuck on the focus square, which is interesting. So let's click on the tank factory obj and see exactly where it is. OK, it's just hovering here above the map. And it should be dead center above. So let's reduce our spawn height to zero and see what happens. There we go. Perfect. Our tanks are now dropping from the sky and landing on our map. So just to show you again, we've got them all listed up here in our hierarchy. And we'll, we'll scroll in and our tanks are all over the place shooting at our buildings. Perfect. That's exactly what we were going for. Now, the question is, why isn't this a good fit? Well, it could work, and it would work just fine. But for the purposes of what we were doing, I figured it was easier to just have it attached to the map and be generating wherever this map is without having to update the location of this object inside the map route. And it made things a little cleaner if, for example, somebody wanted to set up a system so that they could dynamically choose an AR location, it's just an extra step that you have to do as a developer to get this set up to spawn that where it exists. Typically, the use case for this script is to spawn an object at a specific location in the world. And one of the reasons it's included in the Zoom map instructions on Mapbox's website is the actual size of whatever object is being generated will seamlessly zoom in and out. It'll scale up and down based on how close or how far away the user has zoomed. So for easily zoomable maps, this is an awesome option. And it's a great tool that Mapbox has provided for us, allowing us to place special objects in certain parts of the world. One of the reasons I felt that it was important to go over this script with you is while this is a tabletop AR game, a lot of the same principles that we're using here can be applied to world scale AR games as well. And this would be a great tool to use in that case where you want to generate objects in a given location in an AR space. So say for example, you wanted to take tanks of war and turn it into a big city game. You could place these tank factories in predetermined locations all around whatever city you're in or wherever, and you could generate tanks from those using this script. It's a really powerful tool, and I wanted to make sure that it got plenty of coverage so that we could all understand that there are a lot of use cases for it, and it's a really important part of Mapbox. Now, just to show those variables that we talked about earlier on Mapbox's website in action, let's go down to the bottom of this map root object 
in the inspector. And let's take a look at what we've got. So we currently have a size of one for the array of location strings, right? This means that we've got one element, one latitude and longitude that this spawns at. Now, going back to the example of the world scale AR game, where we would want tanks generating all over the world, or even just all over your city, we could set as many of these as we wanted. So say instead of one, I wanted 35 spawn points all over my city. We could do that and set them at those predetermined locations. And it's super easy. We could have it done in a snap. The spawn scale is related directly to the object that spawns. In this case, it's our tank factory obj. And if we inspect it, we see that the scale on X, Y, and Z is all 100. We can't customize this to a point where we could say, you know, we want the X axis to be scaled to 48 and Y to be 96 or anything like that. It's all just one value, but it's still a lot of customization and it's still really great. Going back to the map route down to the bottom, we've got the marker prefab, which is obviously this tank factory obj. And if this object, this prefab, had any kind of visual indicator of what it is, it would be scaled according to what we had set here, and it would be huge. So for example, if we stop running the game, and we swap out this prefab for just a second, and we pass in an enemy tank, rather than the tank factory obj, let's see what happens with the scale. That's rather large, right? So by manipulating this spawn scale number, say I drop it down to 10, we can manipulate the size of whatever this object that's spawning is, whatever this marker is. So press play. And there it is. Perfect. Let's stop running. And we're going to go ahead and pass our tank factory obj back in and change the scale back to where it belongs. Not that it particularly matters, but we'll just leave it at 100. So hopefully going over this script has given you a really good idea of how to use it and how it could apply in your own AR-based games. And they don't even have to be AR-based games. They can be location-based or any other type of map game. But I think this is a really great use case for this. While I decided against using it directly in Drenches of War, you totally could, and you could swap this out for the whole map setup that we had in the beginning, where we attached the factory script directly to the map. And again, this has so many applications. I feel strongly that you should definitely get familiar with this script and get used to using it. It's a really powerful tool that Mapbox has provided so let's not let it go to waste. This has been with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>